sometimes top the turrets here, the manor stands forever. The magpies and the turrets are one, their fate is bound together. These magpies watch us down below, but should they choose to fly, they take fortune with them, so beware, the time is nigh. I beware, the time is nigh. Percy, your uncle's long lost son and heir. But Percy was disgraced during the war. 1917, wasn't it? He was then declared missing, presumed dead. He had never been heard of since. It broke his father's heart. And anyway, what do magpies know about the laws of inheritance? Never, ever mock the magpies, my lord. Learn to respect them like your old uncle did. Respect them? They're birds! What utter nonsense! It's the 1920s, you know, not the Middle Ages. Steady or not, Bean, remember the legend. Aye, my lady, remember the legend. If the magpies leave the manor, the manor is doomed. The man is doomed anyway. Well, according to the bank manager. What's to be done, my dear? Gather the clan. We need a plan. So the clan has gathered, but as usual, we're waiting for our fashionably late daughters. Morning, everyone. I don't you look gloomy. You look as though someone's pinched the family silver. Cheer up. Look at all this lovely space. Let's dance. Good idea. Moving on, 
Well, and my assistants? Here is the fortune. She's gone and she's brought. What do we do? Not a lot. <laughs> I apologise, Lord Peacock. I fear that their days are numbered. Mind number eight. Come in, number eight. Your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Let my family introduce themselves. These are my daughters. I'm Nini, and I sit here Dawn Charleston. Did you hear that, Doc? I can do the Charleston too, you know. I'm Phoebe, the Flapper Girl. What are they saying? What's going on? Who is that? That's our grandma. She's stuck in the last century. She's pretty old, she's pretty deaf, and pretty dotty. No, Mama. Mr. Fortune has come to help us. Help us? Why no? Have you come to take some of these girls off us? If you can't looking for to marry for money, though, you're in the wrong place. No, Mama. I think you've got the wrong end of the stick. No, I don't. I always hold it this way. Anyway. Where's my daughter Latisse? In the sandwiches. It'll be cucumber all the way now. Remember your manners at the manor block? Lift a finger up, lift the cup, take a duck. Here I am, Mama. Good morning, Mr. Fortune. And these are my two daughters. As you can see, we're a tad short of sons and heirs. My name is Hyacinth, Mr. Fortune, but you can call me Hi. Hi, hi. And my name is Lobelia, but you can call me Lo. Hello, Lo. Give the vote to all women, we say. Can I count the number of women to write Mrs. Fortune? This is neither the time nor the place for this nonsense. Really, Mother? All women have the right to be heard. I bet you'd let us have an opinion if we were your sons. Calm down, get off your high horse there. Yeah, I'll go down from our horse block. I can't, she's too high. That was ladies' work, sort of now. I'll fetch my seesaw. That'll stop for now. Come on, honey, we're late as it is. Mind you, don't trip over your dress. It's cousin Rupert. Who's he talking to? Young Rupert, with the woman. It's Honey Divine, the movie star. Hello, everyone. This is Honey Divine, the movie star. We know. Well, I'm frightfully happy. I've planned a special moment to share with you all. Honey, will you marry me? Oh, Ruby, of course I'll marry you. Why, hello, everybody. Who'd have thought it? Little old me marrying into the English aristocracy. Living in a castle with a moat and all. Lady Honey has a certain ring to it, don't you think? Well, well, Mr. Vine, don't get too excited. Cousin Rupert is Lady Peaker's cousin, not Lord Peaker's cousin. But it means Cousin Rupert will never be a lord, so forget your title. Oh my! No title? Oh, how disappointing! Well, it seems to me that young Rupert is elevating his position somewhat. Well, I, I never said. Enough! Although are we, we are delighted to meet you, Mr. Vine. We need to get on with the task in hand. How are we going to save Magpie Manor from Rack and Ruin? Oh my! Rack and Ruin and no title? How disappointing! So this is the situation. After standing here since the 15th century. Wow, well, these are all the name ain't but he's there in the Rack and Ruin. Magpie Manor is in danger of falling down. <gasps> Urgent matters must be taken to raise money. About, we need about £30,000. The reigning family asset, namely the Pika Pika solid silver picture with the magpie picture, must be sold. Not the Pika Pika solid silver picture with the magpie picture. What's a picture? A junky banana. Um, Scribble all we've got here will read the line. Plan for action. Action one. Arrange for a grand auction ball here at Magpie Manor. Action two. Draw up a list of wealthy guests. Action three. Auction off the old truck. I mean. 
the Pika Pika solid silver picture with the magpie picture. Which I'm glad to say is worth £30,000. That's handy. Action 4. Get the Pika Pika solid silver picture with the magpie picture out of the vault for cleaning. Action 5. Arrange for an auctioneer to oversee the sale. Lord Pika, I strongly suggest I have a gamble. He's going for a song. Action 6. Arrange for extra security. I've already taken the liberty of asking Inspector Spectre of the Yard to attend. Or shall I say ex Inspector Spectre of the Yard? I'm sure Inspector Spectre will do a splendid job. Either way, he's going to eat. But no! The whole thing must run like clockwork. We must save the man. Right, Lot, let's have a look at this list of guests. Who will bid for the Pika Pika Solid Silver picture with the Magpie picture, I wonder? Oh, look! Charlie Chaplin from the movie. That's the chap with the funny walk. Oh, there's someone called Agatha Christie. Isn't she the one who writes the food on it? Well, you wouldn't know. You've never read a book, have you? And you've never driven a car, have you? Sir Herbert Austin's next on the list. Bet he turns up in one of his new Austin 7 motor cars. But who's this Albert Einstein bloke? Dunno, some brainless pop, I expect. But we all know this one, the Prince of Wales. Wipe me. We're talking topped off now. We might have to bow and curtsy. Bang, I did a bow. Who else is there? That Winston Churchill fella from the government. The one that smokes them big fat cigars. He can afford to. He's the Chancellor of the Exeter. Oh, that's where all our money goes. Have you heard of this Noel Coward? Is there a songwriter and playwright? Of course I have. But who are these two? Captain Alcock and Lieutenant Brown. Not so smart after all, are you? They're them two what won loads of dosh from the Daily Mail to fly across the Atlantic. Watch it, here comes old fortune cookie. Look busy. I've come for the guest list. I hope all the invitations are ready for the morning. Almost finished, Mr. Rack. Just a bit more licking and sticking. And we'll be done and dusted. I'm afraid that these two clowns are the very fellows that you wanted to help in the auction. Pleased to meet you. I'm the auctioneer, Ida Gavel. So he has. And I'm Inspector Spectre in charge of security. Spooky. I beg your pardon. Oh, you're going to have to keep an eye on me, Stu. I find them very trying at times. What do you mean, Mr. Spooky? We're always trying. Then you will be expected to try, to try even harder to articulate the end of the circumstances. Circumstances? You two are to guard the Pika Pika solid silver picture with the magpie picture during the war. Then, just before dinner, it will be ceremoniously unveiled for public viewing by the Lady Pika. The future, the future fortune of Magpie Manor is in your hands. We must be mad. I will have my eyes on you at all times, and you will have your eyes on the valuable Pika Pika. job if they concentrate. It was ex-Inspector Spectre's idea and he's the expert. Yes, but I'm afraid that my two useless assistants will concentrate more on the dancing than they will on the family silver. 
Do we have to put Cousin Rupert next to that divine woman at dinner tonight? He's making such a fool of himself over her. She clearly thinks she's marrying to the aristocracy. Cousin Rupert will do anything to impress her, you know. He warned Ma. He asked me if I thought you might loan him a few thousand. Some hope, with the way the stock market's going, it will be me asking him for money.
question. Please listen to the results of my preliminary investigations. Point one. The peak a peak solid silver picture of the magpie picture was last seen in this room at four o'clock or was placed here beneath the velvet red velvet cover. Point two. Scribble of block began guarding the picture at 4.15pm. This leaves 15 minutes unaccounted for. I will now ask each of you where you were at this time. Well, those of us who were guests didn't arrive until 6 o'clock, so that counts us out. Please refrain from interruption, madam. I will now ask each of you to step forward in turn with your alibi. Scribble, lots, take notes. Are you ready? Begin. We'll go first, eh, Block? Ready, girl? We were on the lawn, dancing up the storm. I was at the table, checking seating labels. I was on my own, applying for a loan. We were in the town, pinning posters all around. I was on the bed, painting my toenails red. I was on the gravel, talking to Ivor Gavin. That can't be right, you see. I was taking tea. Lord Peter, you are next. We surely don't expect. We were doing our best to get ready for the guest. And last but not least, Inspector, tell me where you were. How dare you, Madame? But since you asked, I was out the back talking to my friend Matt. But we only had a word. Then I went to check the birds. What have we here? Basil Bud has been in the boat cleaning up the moat when he fished up these old sacks. That one looks very old and that one uh, was quite interesting actually. That old sack's made of leather I'd say. And look, it has the family crest with magpies on it. But this one looks like Bernie Black's coal, coal sacks. I hate to say, but I'm taking it all to the inspector. Well since I am... <coughs> Helping the inspector with his inquiries, I'll take those and you can go and have a well-deserved cup of tea. Very well, ma'am. Who's on it then, inspector? The Agatha Christie lady's on the case too. You should compare it to that. She always gets a man when she writes her book. She's nothing more than a meddling old lady. I intend to silence her in a moment. Call that them back, I have further questions to ask. Right, you go, inspector. Everybody back! I have an important announcement to make. My investigation is nearly done. Ah, Inspector, just the man. Madame, for the last time, I forbid you to speak. Forbid me? Well, I think my words will soon be silencing you, Inspector. Or should I say, Percy Peacock? <gasps> Percy Peacock? Our Percy Peacock? Disgraced in 1917. I knew he looked familiar. You know, it's amazing what a touch of hair dye and a dose of arrogance will do. We should try it, Block. We might get promotion. Are you all going to listen to this woman? She's a writer of fiction. All she wants to do is get ideas for her next novel. Yes, we will listen. Scribble and Block stand very close to this. At the board. We don't want him escaping, escaping arrest. Oh dear, it's all very confusing. Please explain, Inspector. Well, this man truly is your long lost relative, an heir to Magpie Man. An heir to Magpie Man. When he was found guilty of spying in 1917, before he could be punished, he conveniently disappeared, and I imagine he has been sheltered by agencies abroad ever since. I knew there was something fishy about him. You didn't say he was fishy. You said he was going cheap. Enough! How do you know all this, Miss Christie? Well, when he wasn't looking, I, I switched notebooks with him. I think you'll find there's a lot of interesting reading in yours, Inspector. <clears throat> Excuse me, ma'am, but that's one of Bernie Black's coal sacks. He said he was one sure after the delivery. Well, you see, it is. Basil Bud found it after he was cleaning out the moat. 
I think our so-called inspector knows that inside we will find the missing Pika Pika solid silver pitcher with the magpie picture. And how do you know that? You're old. Elementary, my dear inspector. You see, it is fastened with one of your trademark silk ties. May I look? You old thief. You, you absolute bounder. Scotland Yard are on their way, my lord. That leather sack looks remarkably old. It must have been in the moat for a very long time. It also looks very heavy and as if it could have come from a medieval sword. It must be worth a fortune. Lord Peter, I think your money troubles are finally over. Indeed, my lord. This means that the Pika Pika solid silver pitcher with the magical pitcher can remain in the family. This treasure hoard can pay all the repairs that you need. This must be the Pika Pika treasure trove. Your uncle has been looking for it forever. God rest his soul. It's been lost for generations. Well, all's well that ends well. Thank you, everyone. And especially you, Mrs. Christie. I shall read your novel to you. And thank you too, Mrs. Borky. I think your job at the bank is going to do very well. And anyway, what did happen to Mr. Dunn's garden staff and me? Oh, the poor man got his bicycle wheel stuck in the tram line. Yeah, he went right off the rails. Very funny. Hey, John, did you finish reading the book? Yeah. What do you write about old Spectre then? I heard. He spied, was tried, and then he died. Then he nicked the loot, tried to scoop. But then the brute got the boot. Well said! So listen to my sound advice, and heed an old man's warning. Now when you see a magpie, salute and say good morning.